Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are. Sebastian, Sebastian is stretching and... Just waking up. Yeah. We, we just made fun of each other for always asking ourselves, uh, oh, how are you doing and how that would change if we do for once like eight hours recording in a row, like to have 16, what would that be? 16 debates then? And every single time we start with, how are you doing, Sebastian? How has your day been? I'm still alive and kicking. As always. <laughs> But you actually wanted me to ask you how you're doing, don't you? No, that's fine. We had a related debate where uh, Chancellor Merkel had a picture hanging in her offices done by an expressionist who, on one hand, was expressed by the Nazis as a bad artist, but at the other hand was an, uh, an NS party member. So there was a lot of controversy around her having this picture this on display in her official office spaces and uh, the picture got removed and there was a lot of discussion if we should or should not allow that picture to be hung even though the art is recognized as high art and all that and this is um, related to our motion today because today we wanted to debate If uh, or the motion today is going to be art should be appreciated irrespective of its creator's unacceptable behavior, which is kind of a classic. It's, like, uh, it's a classic, but at the same time, I think it comes back to the forefront uh, at, at the news these days because of all the political correctness uh, or the lack of, let's say, in, in some cases. So I think this comes back, you know, if, even more vividly these days to question yourself whether you can look into someone's behavior and and the reason i mentioned this i'm specifically referring to the me too movement for instance uh, and 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 all the film directors or actors or others who have been embroiled into the scandal uh, or or mm -hmm. are facing trials and then suddenly what do you do of their art of the films they have directed or produced there's the obvious one yeah Harvey Weinstein, who's the producer, not an artist uh, himself, but there's the the more obvious case of Roman Pol Polanski, right, who was uh, convicted in the U.S. So what do we do in this case, right? I like his art, to be completely honest. Now, what do we? What do you do? Not, you uh, hold your horses. Ah. Don't make your case just yet. We are not in the middle of the debate yet. Fair enough. However, I would. My, the, the reason I say I like his art is, is to. What I try to do in the debate, though, is to be more. to make it outside of my personal preferences, right? I try to make more of a mm -hmm. general statement with rational arguments, not to put my emotional feelings. Although, yeah, because you would never put in your emotions I when it serves your. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that that's not true, that indeed I use the emotional <laughs> tactics a bit too freely every single time to try and sway the audience, uh, but that never works. Yes. Are you ready? I am totally ready. Because the flip of the virtual coin made it so that you're going to start and you're indeed claiming that art should be appreciated irrespectively of its creator's unacceptable behavior. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. We, we live in a very polarized time in which people and things are seen very often as good or evil, good or bad. But the thing is, life is much more complicated. People are complicated, and so is art. So is the making of art. Now, I'm not saying that artists are above the law. If they commit crimes, they should be tried and go to jail if this is the, the sentence. But what was art in May must certainly be still art in June. You cannot unart art. Even if, you know, you had something in between in the life of the artist which modified what is happening to them as a person. The idea that you cannot identify with someone, and I'm quoting Brad Easton Ellis, who's the writer uh, behind American Psycho. The idea that you cannot identify with someone or something, then it's not worth watching or reading or listening, is now commonplace in society. Sometimes used as a weapon to attack somebody else. And this is something that really strikes me as be completely uh, surprising. We're already influenced anyway psychologically by the artist's behavior. So I think we should try to do all that's possible to resist that bias 
which is already there anyway because we can't help it. We will hear about the artist's biography at some point and really try to analyze art. The quality is that one, that piece of art, a place in whatever collection or museum cannot be extinguished. They cannot be rubbed out, erased, just like you erase some chalk on a board, just because the perversions of the man or the woman uh, who had created that art are revealed to the public. And with every new biography, every time this is happening, there comes new outrage. So my, my opinion here is that work stands alone. And there's so many examples. I was surprised. I was doing my little research of all the examples that uh, come, uh, came across of artists and creators who have committed uh, offenses and crimes. One of them, which it may be less surprising or maybe less known to some of our listeners, but touches touches me in a particular way because I went to museums and I really appreciated that art. And that's Caravaggio. He's a painter from, I believe, the 19th century and 18th century. I'm not too sure of, this, of the times now. I, I would need to look it up again. And what I realized is that, actually, it's the 17th century. What I realized is that Caravaggio was actually a murderer. Now, he's very well known for his art depicting uh, the contrast in lighting and shadows in his paintings. And it's truly remarkable for the paintings, especially at that time. Now, does this change the way I see the painting? Well, not until recently when I read about their biography, his biography. And in this case, well, I still try to appreciate the art for what it is. So no, I don't think you should conflate art and the artist which created that piece of art. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear his argument. We hear that quite a lot these days, right? That people say, oh... It should be separated what people created as pieces of art and what they did. And I sometimes have the feeling that the reason why people demand that is because otherwise they have an obligation to position themselves towards art. So claiming that it's better to keep those things separate also allows you to kind of steer away from, oh, I have to have an opinion on what this artist did. I agree. Sometimes we don't even, I would say, we don't even know what artists did and nobody is perfect. And to make things worse, uh, it changes over time what we as a society deem to be uh, worthy of damnation. So it's a moving target that makes things harder. But on the other hand, I believe we as a society consuming art, we as people watching, reading, listening to art, we also have an obligation to think about the context to the degree we become aware of it. So artists are the first ones, by the way, to claim that art is not something that stands alone. Many, many artists claim that they pour themselves into it. And art is a way for them to become famous and rich often. Not in all cases, but it's a potential that they tap into. And whenever art is displayed, we always celebrate the artist. Now that, again, comes back to the argument that I made initially. It's an obligation. We celebrate some things through this art. We celebrate something by, by paying money for seeing pieces of art, by sometimes financing those people to quite an interesting degree. And that also, I think, creates a question. How much we are prepared to support artists we know have acted in the past in a way that we condemn or may even continue to act in such a way? And yeah, so all these things basically bring me to my stance that we shouldn't keep those separate. As soon as we know about misbehavior of artists, we should hold them accountable. They should have a chance to redeem themselves. But if they don't, well, then it's on us to act. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. Let me go through your various points. You mentioned firstly that this could be an escape uh, or steering away from having an opinion on the artist. But the work, the work of art stands alone. When we, are, when we have this extra information, what is it that we know? Political correctness or personal rectitude does not ensure the beauty of a work of art or an elegant prose style. So when to read a book or watch a movie is to have this aesthetic response to the work. It's not about making a moral judgment about its creator. If you want to have a moral judgment or an opinion, you can have it. It's about the person who created the piece of art, not the actual book or the film. 
or the or the music or the song that you're hearing you're saying afterwards that artists are pouring themselves into the piece of art yes I agree, it is useful to sometimes understand the artist's life, to understand maybe how the work was built in such a way, or the themes that have influenced that artist, the colors that are used in a painting. It can provide some useful context, but why add moral judgment? It's not as if we're inviting the artist to dinner or to get them to meet our children, if they're suspected of being pedophiles, for instance. The third aspect you mentioned about and you, you, there was kind of implicit in what you were saying, uh, the aspect of making money. Uh, and you make it seem as if, well, that's a bad thing if they're criminals. But the thing is, I'm not saying they're above, lo- b- above the law. They're not above the law. In fact, they're neither above the law, nor do they have artists' special ethical obligations. They're entitled to live just like any other human being with a lot of flaws and crimes. And it's hard to be a good person. It's even just as hard or maybe harder to produce great work And most of us accomplish neither, neither being a great person, neither producing great work. So to demand both being a good person and producing great work might be asking a little bit too much from uh, a human being. And it's silly to deprive ourselves of this, these great works of art, even if they're created by not so great people. You know, why, why bother doing the, the distinction? Now, you raise a good point, which I did not think of, which is what about subsidies, right? When you subsidize art. In this case, I, thinking quickly about it, I would tend to agree that you probably don't want to fund a person who's not controversial, but who has maybe committed crimes. But that doesn't change anything to their art they may have created up to now, and they're still entitled to create art on their own or have private funding. I'm more cautious about public funding. This is, this is true. There is an area here which I did not think of. So in conclusion, it would be, of course, so much simpler if all artists just lived if not at least honor, honorably, then at least discreetly. But let's grow up. Life is more complex. It's not black and white. We're not all great people. And as I said, it's even more difficult to produce great works of art. So let's at least enjoy that art and forget or leave to the side or have a moral judgment about the creator, but it does not need to affect the way we perceive art. Otherwise, there's many of these people from whom we would disregard the art they created. Le Marquis de Sade, uh, in France, Roman Polanski, Wagner, uh, Kevin Spacey, uh, Karayan. Uh, ironically, Karayan is the one who's interpreting the European anthem. Uh, we still have that. Uh, Justin Bieber with his various run-ins with the law. Um, not to say I'm a huge fan, but some people and millions of people are. So no, let's let's appreciate art independently from the creator's behavior. Now it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear it. Let's put what I'm trying to say and communicate into an example that's more mundane. Let's move away from art for a moment. There has been an incident where I overheard a hairdresser making racist remarks while I was sitting in the waiting line. I'm a creature of habit. Once I decided on a hairdresser, I go to the same hairdresser every single time. Once I decided on my my baker shop, I go to the same baker shop. The same was true here. And I was going to that particular hairdresser for a couple of years until I heard that guy saying quite shockingly what he thought about people of color. Now, if I follow your line of argument, I should appreciate the work he does to my hair as a separate thing, right? So he's doing good work. He's giving me what I pay for, a solid haircut. And I was always happy with that. But after I overheard what um, what this guy thought about people of color, I was unable to continue in that vein. And I was not able to separate that person from the work. And I walked out of the shop and never returned. And I I just say the same should be true for everything where we claim to have a moral compass and every piece of art we contemplate has that context attached to that. Now, I don't claim that artists need to be perfect human beings. They probably lie, deceive, uh, um, I don't know, uh, try to avoid taxes, whatnot. There is a whole spectrum. And some pieces of art are not the work of one individual. That's also an element that we need to consider. But there are things that are just unacceptable. And as soon as somebody is known to have done such an act, then I become a consumer and a supporter of this work when I still keep 
consuming and uh, appreciating this art, then I usually, my stance would be to remove that out of my field of consciousness. And if I, um, if I regard that piece of art, then I would add the whole context to it. And I definitely would be careful not to be another sounding board and another uh, advertising board for that particular artist. And this is what I mean. It's really, really important that we are true to our values because you could say the same thing about a million other things. You could say, oh yeah, let's just appreciate the piece of meat for what it is, which is a really tasty steak. I ignore the fact that cows have to die for it. I just appreciate the result that is on my plate. This is just not how this works. If you really claim to be an ethical person, you have to draw lines in the sand. And yeah, sometimes this includes making the connection between the artist and the art that has been created. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. Artists are not above the law, but at the same time, they do not have to have higher ethical standards than the average human being. No one is forced to appreciate everything and anything of a given artist. You can certainly be influenced by how they behaved in life. But I'm just saying that if you do that, you're missing out. You're missing out and enjoying art. You would not understand the evolution of painting throughout time, of film throughout time, of music throughout time. You can have two opinions. Absolutely, you can have an opinion, a moral judgment on the artist's life. This is absolutely, totally fine. And you can also have an opinion on art without mixing these two opinions. The aesthetics of a piece of art does not have to be influenced by your moral judgment. What was aesthetic yesterday remains beautiful today and tomorrow. It should transcend time, it should transcend your knowledge of that person's life and lifestyle. Dirk. My final minute, instead of repeating what I already said, I want to use for my final argument. That is, we express ourselves by the things we celebrate, by the art we consume, by the art we talk with others about. And with that, we always also talk about the artist. To some extent, we make our connection to these artists our own. So I do believe there is no way to recognizing and considering art without that connection. And as much as society knows about those artists' behavior, it is our responsibility to either recognize it as such and communicate it, or maybe demonstrate that we are following a moral and social code and stay away from art we don't want to affiliate ourselves with. What is your real stance? I can imagine this time you argued your real position. Yes. Yes. Uh, for this, I think I'm pretty pretty adamant uh, on this aspect. I, I Oh, this is what I wanted to say, maybe, is that you know, sooner or later you'll discover this shit in everyone's life and there will be no art left. That I, sh I wanted to say this and I forgot. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Hmm. <laughs> well, you said it now, so it's in the recording. <laughs> Um, and that is true, by the way. That's that's the one thing I struggle with. Because in the end, it is a moving target. As I said, the goalpost is moving. So who knows Who knows what Seneca was for and after. I, that back in the days, they were easy on child molesting and other things. So um, probably a lot of unacceptable behavior is high antique art. So I know all this. But that's why I made uh, made my argument around the aspect of making people famous that we know we condemn their behavior today and making art part of our self-expression that we have context about. Um, so I do think there is a line to walk. I do, uh, however, share that, that thought that uh, it's hard to ignore the contribution Michael Jackson made to pop music. No matter if you like what he did or not, no matter if you ignore it or not, but it's it's hard to overlook and it's hard to avoid his music. And the same true for, I don't know, 
um, some of the writers we have. Uh, I mean, Hemingway was an alcoholic and from all I, I read, a uh, pretty solid asshole. Uh, still considered one of the best writers we ever ever had on this uh, walking the earth I th so there's there's a challenge there yeah i think the challenge is how you how you present the work and how you defend whether whether you're defending the piece of of art or the or the person if you're if you're defending someone tooth and nail to the death, right? Like you, you just say, "Oh, Hemingway is such a you know ins inspiration for me." Well, are you saying the person and, and their life, or are you talking about their their art? I, I, I and I think anyway, as I said, I think we're we're biased anyway because as soon as you get information, it will not get out of your head, right? Every time you, you listen to Michael Jackson, it will be in your head, right? Maybe uh, maybe not consciously all the time, but you will know the information, and there will be probably more information revealed over the next few years. I'm, it's probably yeah. obvious. But still, I think you can, you know, have it, you can keep this in the side of your brain and then still appreciate for the music or the dance moves or whatever it is that you like in Michael Jackson, at least what you, the way he produced his art. I don't know. I think it's we, we owe it to ourselves and to recognizing that we have weaknesses and flaws and that criminal activity is just another segment of humankind. It is the justice system. This is one part of society. And then you have art, which is another. I know it's hard, but... But that, that, that is, uh, there's a line that is blurry. That was the point where I arrived at. Because my natural stance would have been yours. That was my, that was what I, I would have started with. Um, but uh, there are things where it's harder to make that, uh, that dist uh, distinction. I give you an example. Um, there are fashion brands, right? Uh, that are worn by certain subgroups. For instance, uh, if you're neo-Nazis, there are fashion brands, streetwear brands that neo-Nazis wear as a sign of being members of these groups. Now, there are pretty nice streetwear labels out there where I even would say I like the optics of it, but knowing that this is essentially a neo-Nazi propaganda piece, I would never ever even 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 spend one cent on these and I would certainly not buy it even if they may look nice to me and th there is there is that that line that I, I try to point out that to some extent you express yourself through the art you're promoting and through the art you speak with others about and then you take on a responsibility I believe to at least educate people around you if you decide to go ahead with it or just live with the fact that you make the actions and the, the connotation of that piece of art to some extent your own as well. And that is where, where it becomes a bit hard for me to say, oh, you should keep it separate. Because that's it's always a matter of interpretation of your surrounding world as well. I think where, where there is controversy, to extend what you're saying, is like, imagine you say you enjoy art, but the only kind of art you like is Hitler's painting. Adolf Hitler's paintings. <laughs> like, that could be suspicious. Like, really? Really? Yeah. You do, you, for you, art is Hitler's paintings, uh, who was an amateur painter and apparently not a, not a great one either, according to critics. So that would be suspicious. Imagine you, 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 you wear the street where you were mentioning. You collect mm -hmm. Nazi paintings or, or, they, or the paintings from na Nazi artists. That would be suspicious, right? But if in your collection of appreciation of art, you have... Let's say, let's say this controversial streetwear. You have other non-controversial art, let's say, from non-controversial artists. Then I think it's it's a fair case, right? I think I think you have to put the entire picture, right? If you, and in general, what I would say is, who cares about what people think of you, right? If you decide to wear that leather jacket or whatever it is because you you like it, then in the I I would I would love for people to feel they can they can feel free enough to wear whatever they want, whatever people but think. Would you? Would you buy a label if you know this is a label other uh, neo-Nazis wear and people around you associate with neo-Nazi uh, wear? I mean, you kind of you kind of wear as a signature. You you kind of signpost you yourself as a potential member of a group you despise. I think it's you know, I I don't know I I probably would not buy anything but I'm trying to think and the thing is you're digressing a little bit because in this case the, the, we're not talking about the artist but the person wearing the, the the fashion right yeah but what I what I try to say is um, we are in a in our today's world 
who we are is expressed by what movies we watch, what music we hear, what paintings we admire, what brands we wear, all these things. So with everything that you are openly supporting, you communicate something about who you are, what you believe, what your value system is, and what you what you think uh, is is good and great and and wonderful and whatnot, or the the, uh, the vice versa, right? So it's also the how you uh, consume things that comes into it. So going into an art exhibition. If you look through that lens, and then visiting an art exhibition is more than just looking at paintings. It's also making a statement about what you're into. And then it becomes a matter of what kind of exhibition, how things are presented, how you are looking at that and how you talk about this as well. It's just, I, I do believe art cannot stand on its own. It's just not separate, it's, it's in context. And this is where it becomes hard when you say, oh yeah, uh, I know this guy was a child molester. Um, therefore, um, uh, I think it becomes hard to say, oh, I'm a, I'm a round, uh, round fan of Michael Jackson. You always have to kind of put that in context and either communicate it as such or be critical about it. Or saying, hey, child molesting is not a big deal for me. That may also be so. There are people that see it that way. But I hope, I deeply hope this is the minority. It seems to me you're moving from how art should be perceived holistically from a, an objective standpoint to how the person enjoying that piece of art is perceived. I think we're talking about two different things. You're talking about the person who's affiliated with appreciating a piece of art. And... I think this is moving away from the initial debate. It's close, but it's not the exact debate. And and to your point on, on that aspect, on how, how would I be perceived if I go to a specific art exhibition or if I wear certain things, I I think the majority of the cases is that nobody get, nobody cares. Like we're nobodies. Like we're not public people. Right? So I think you may want to have this kind of thinking if you're a public official, if you're elected, if you're a CEO. Right. In this case, maybe you should maybe think twice because you're you're more than just your person. You're, you're representing a, a, a spectrum of the population. You're representing a company, whatever it is. But if you're a nobody, which is 99% of the population like us, I would say, I would say maybe it's naive. Maybe it is naive, but I would say, who gives a fuck where you go? Yes, it is true that if you go to a Nazi exhibition, art exhibition, and you could be perceived as, oh, maybe he's a Nazi supporter. Yes, it is true. But you could be also a researcher, right? It, it is actually possible, right? You actually just dig into the details. Yeah. yeah and who yeah, cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who cares, right? Um, you're, you're not someone who, who, who the press or the media is going to talk about. This, this is an aspect of what I'm saying, but uh, not the whole thing. First off, if everybody would think that way, then, then nobody would have cared about firing Kevin Spacey. Because Kevin Spacey was not fired because people all of a sudden felt a moral need to do that. He was fired because they were scared about the, uh, the, the, the shitstorm they're going to earn after, after all the things that came out. And so, so it's not true that uh, you, your behavior as a consumer of art doesn't change things. I do believe if enough people make a stance and that stance is a moral stance, that has an immediate impact on on discourse and draws that are uh, lines that are drawn or not drawn so that that's number one the other thing is i know you know there there are bands out there that sing um pretty heavy nazi propaganda music and you cannot tell me that everybody standing in those concerts is a researcher i would be very surprised to poll them and uh, find out that 10,000 researchers are just faking to be nazis um and my stance is not, oh, what are others thinking of me? My stance here is, you communicate something. You communicate approval or disapproval. You communicate a value system. And if enough people do that, then this changes how we be, uh, perceive things. And this changes what we accept or not, uh, do not accept as a society. And that goes beyond the individual artist. That, that goes into normal behavior. And if... It, artists happen to be the most visible parts of our society so this is where it becomes for everybody visible 
And this is where I would say the responsibility of me as a consumer of art um, is because I'm communicating something visibly by consuming, by throwing my support into something. I miss, I miss Kevin Spacey. I miss Kevin Spacey as the actor. He was great in The Usual Suspect in LA Confidential and House of Cards. I, I love the actor and the way he plays. I, I'm going to miss him and he's never going to show up again, in my opinion, in any film or whatever, TV series. So I don't have any qualms about saying that. Maybe it's easier for me because nobody's going to relay my opinion. And I found many a other actors and actresses, but of course I do not support any of his possibly criminal acts, possibly because as far as I know, he's not been convicted or in jail yet or at all. Who knows what's going to happen? But yes, I do think he's a great actor. And I think it's it's a loss for the film industry because he has a specific way of acting. So yeah, it's maybe controversial. Maybe people are going to hate me for saying that. But I want to I want to think that I don't care too much if people hate me just for expressing that opinion. Maybe I'm naive. No, no, I I do think saying he's a great actor is not at all contradictory to say yeah, and I still don't believe we can separate his art from his behavior how so uh, let's let's talk about la confidential how is his attitude on on the set let's say of the film uh, or outside of the film set influence in any way the quality of his acting well now that you know how he behaves do you really want to spend your money and continue to support him just because he's such a good actor Uh, I don't know. You raise a good point. Uh, you raise a good point. It's like the, the money aspect is a problem. But I don't know. It's uh, I don't I don't. I, yeah, it's a bit like what you said about the meat aspect. Like I, I enjoy the acting, so I don't want to deprive myself of it. And I don't want to think about the consequences of supporting financially someone who's actually not a great human being. It is true. It is. Maybe it's back to your point about the challenges of it. And it's so annoying when then suddenly everything falls silent and you freeze on my screen and now it seems like you still hear me. Oh, now you're moving again. I would say this has been a great debate. Shall we wrap it up, Sebastian, now that you're moving again? <laughs> <laughs> let's, wrap, let's wrap it up. Otherwise, we'll never make it to the end. Yeah, interesting debate. Uh, more interesting than I thought, indeed. Um, um, all right, let's have our listeners vote. You can go to todebate.eu. That's a website address. So you can put thumbs up, thumbs down based on who convinced you the most. Try to stay away from your own stereotypes, biases, and judgments uh, on who is speaking uh, of, of uh, each of us and try to see who convinced you with their rational, of course, rational arguments. Uh, thumbs up or thumbs down. Thanks for listening and catch up with us soon for another debate thank you bye 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 <laughs>